this day and age, people trust faceless organizations less and less, right? They want to hear like personal stories. They want to see a face to it. They want to they want to know who you are, what you believe in, what you stand for. And the most difficult part is kind of I think finding your own voice that people like. <laughs> I think people people are often scared, and, and if that you know their voice is something that will turn people off. Um, or that people that won't resonate with people. Like, don't write with the intention of getting someone to like what you're saying. Just write something you really want to put out. That's what would really boost you. We're never presenting ourselves in a bad light, right? We're always trying to present ourselves in the best light. We have thousands of prominent voices kind of saying the same thing. It's not really going to move us further. It's going to move us in one direction. And you're going to have to invite like voices that you disagree with. Like, is it okay to contradict yourself? Is it okay to change your mind? Like, being authentic. Like, what what is that? So Edgar, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit about how you got into PR? It's kind of a, I guess, a really a long-winded road. Um, it took me to different places. I, I started out, I think I had to go back to, to college. I, I went to school for international relations. I'd done a couple of internships. I did, I interned at Merrill Lynch. Then I went to State Farm to do sales. But both of those you know, made me realize that I didn't want to do either of those things. And I, I really wanted to just create. Um, so I taught myself how to code and I dropped out of school because um, then I realized like, well, like I can build things and, and people are giving me, offering me jobs to kind of build web apps um, or mobile apps for them. And advisably tried to start a nightlife company. Did that for two years, um, stopped doing that, went back to contracting, just kind of ran my own dev shop for a while. I just kind of like really, just really thought about kind of just how... I think I've struggled with building products. Like I'd, I'd, I'd build a lot of apps and then kind of just, you know, it, it was always the philosophy of like, you know, if, if you build it, they'll come and they never come. So it was kind of like trying to figure out really for myself and, and for, you know, some of our clients, like how do we, how do we get more people in the door? Like we think this product is really great, but no one knows about it. No one cares about it. Um, and so, and just repeatedly running into that issue from there, realize like, Hey, like, you know, I think I really want to get into figuring out how to like promote, you know, our, my business or, you know, my, my client's businesses. And then, and then I, yeah, I've had a co-founder that, that had, uh, worked with me on the nightlife company. Um, he went on and, and kind of, um, his name's David Jang and he, you know, after we dissolved the nightlife company, he moved to LA told, told me that he was going to just really get big on the influence, influencer community, um, which he did. And so just built all these connections. And so also got him in touch with a bunch of like, um, just publications as well, uh, contacts there. Um, and so we came back together, I think two years ago where, or three years ago where we said, Hey, like, you know, like he's got the connections. I like to create things. I think we should really come together and, and build something here. Um, and so we, thought like, Hey, like we just want to make it easier than ever for people to kind of put their story out there, um, and to build their credibility and authority, obviously, you know, for, for those who, who deserve, who like are, are genuinely building something, you know, that, that, that is authentic and legitimate. Um, but you know, so we created this PR marketplace, uh, it's called press cart. You can log on, um, create account, log on, um, view kind of all the publish publications that we have agreements with and we have over 800 of them now. Um, these are places like uh, USA Today, Men's Journal, Life, Life and Style, Tech Times, Inverse. Um, there's a big, big variety of it, big variety of them. And we kind of want to, you know, yeah, we want to become like kind of the biggest marketplace for this. Um, and you can kind of just pick which ones you want to apply or pitch to. And then you answer a couple questions. Um, our team will get to work kind of just working with, with the publication, um, to figure out, you know, uh, story can be placed and, um, the whole process you can see on the portal. And then, you know, once it's published, you know, you get the live link, you see the article. Um, yeah. So I think the number one use case that, that, you know, we kind of, that our clients use press card for is to, to build thought leadership. Um, you know, I, I think in, in this, this day and age, um, there's, there's, People trust faceless organizations less and less, right? They want to hear like personal stories. They want to see a face to it. They want to, they want to know who you are, what you believe in, what you stand for. And yeah. And then, you know, we, we are kind of just lasered in on trying to 
really build kind of the processes and the services and, and around that to, to help you in your journey of becoming a thought leader. Great. Yeah, that all kind of seems like one thing led to another fairly organically, even though it, it has to do with uh, going from New York to L.A. and international relations to nightclubs to now like public image. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, communication, identity, framing. Um, speaking of which, uh, I don't know how you look at it. I'm curious. But since I've been focusing more on entrepreneurship, I started to see countries as essentially companies. Uh, I see a lot of similarities between like a company and a country. I was curious with your background in international relations and the experience you've had since, uh, how, how do you look at that? I, it's so interesting because and it's, 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 there's for better or worse, right? I think everyone's kind of just like, it's all about the story now, like the story you're putting out, um, you know, whether it's, like the USA is a good actor or a bad, bad actor or China is a good actor or a bad actor. And then, and then, and then it's all about like, you know, the story of like the U S it's, it's the country of freedom. It, it was built to, you know, and, and taken, um, kind of the best, best in the, the best of the world, the, the immigrants, the, um, you know, the best talent, the, the, the best people, or the, on the flip side, it's the U S came in, stole all this land. Um, and it's, and it's continued to steal land and, and, um, and to continue to, to fight endless wars to kind of protect that, um, their interests. Um, so it's like, you know, those, those kind of two are like, I think like a dichotomy of the stories that can be heard about the U S, um, and that applies to kind of every country. And it's, it's all about, I think, you know, which story sounds better in a way, like, you know, obviously other factors as well, but, um, but I think so much of, uh, I think so much of, of what we see or care about online is so much about that emotional resonance um, and certain causes or certain countries will, will, will be able to put out certain stories that, that, you know, that, that really kind of strike your emotional cords um, in one way or the other. Um, and so it's, it's, it's all about a lot of times, I think, weaponizing that as well. Yeah. Really, really interesting time, especially, I think, you know, it's all, all kind of just, just um, taken to an extreme now with, with, with X or, Twitter, if you want to call it that. Um, and, um, yeah, it's all, it's all about kind of just who can, who can kind of tug at the, the, the emotional, like, um, can, can create the most emotional impact with the stories that they're telling. Um, and, and it's so, it's so powerful and, it, and, and it's, uh, and I think certain people are, can, can use it better than others. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of scary, but also, you know, I think, um, also, I think in, in inspiring in certain ways, you know, as long as, you know, well, it depends on who you think is the good, the good guys, but if the good guys can, can, can really tell a good story, then they can win. So. Yeah, it's interesting. And I, I've also seen this phenomenon, I suppose, where nature is uh, a bit more fair in the macro. So like you could see like a champion, for example, it could be a gold medalist or, or a billionaire or whatever. Oftentimes, champion let's say is at their weakest when they've won because they have evidence now to suggest that they don't have to change um and i think basically living in chaos uh if you have someone who's scrappy and going to iterate and try anything that works uh they have an advantage on finding the next thing that works because we don't know what's coming um and so when you mentioned storytelling and who, who's like winning that kind of narrative at the time um, I think there's op oftentimes opportunity um, for that story to either fizzle out, uh, something's overplayed. There's, there's a bunch of, I don't want to go too, too deep into it, but it just, it's, it's interesting to see how there's all these like trade-offs, for example. So it, also, if you have like a winning story, we, we tend to want to conserve energy. So yeah, you want to use what already works. I agree with kind of your assessment there, and it, it is very much storytelling uh, to a large degree. I think, and this goes back to PR, but we are emotional creatures first, like even the most scientific of us uh, processes through the emotional kind of uh, core first. Um, and so we have this, I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's a feature, not a bug of who we are, but it, it's interesting. Like, I don't know how brainwashed I am, if I'm being honest with you. Um, and, uh, and, and I think what's interesting is like, we're not done being brainwashed. Like, like, and, and some of that could be, you're going to be a billionaire, you know, but it's like, you need that belief in yourself and um, the flexibility to, to shift. Like, oh, you know, this is the good guy. And it's like, well, what if the good guy's gonna lose? Do you still want the opportunity to win? 
Because if so, you're going to have to have some flexibility of thought. And then of course, too much flexibility is like, you don't stand for anything, but how can people go about um, building a, a good personal brand, given some of the complexities of the world that we live in? I think to, to add on to um, a lot of the great comments that you made, it's that, um, you know, I think it's not being talked about enough. I think uh, there's like, there's like different, there's different words that are being, they're, they're naming it now. Like there's like, there's a big build in public trend um, on X uh, or LinkedIn, you know, where, um, you know, I think it's being promoted by people like, uh, like Peter Levels. Uh, well, it kind of started with him, um, I think, or he was one of the biggest ones to start it. Um, but a lot of people are doing it now. You see like founders, you know, from like people who are just starting out to like, big companies, um, like, um, like billion dollar company founders or CEOs jumping on, um, Twitter and, or X and talking about kind of just like their, their processes, what their, what their challenges are, um, and sharing and, and only being really kind of like the official spokesperson for, for the company. Um, when you'd never heard from this company before, but all of a sudden you're hearing from their CEO, it's, it's a really interesting time and, and no one's gonna, I don't think I, I haven't heard at least from, from my spaces on, on X, um, in terms of anyone calling it like a, like a PR, uh, phenomenon. Right. And, and, but it is, it's like, um, all of a sudden you have people who are jumping into the PR space, doing PR for themselves and not really even like, I guess, cognizant of that. It's just like there, but, but it's, it's really cool. It's really grassroots. It's like, um, people are just kind of like, they, they kind of see, um, the benefits of, of kind of just putting themselves out there and, and, and where you can take that personal brand and, you know, it's, it's, and then people, but oftentimes the struggle is, and as you're saying, like, how do they really kind of, how do, how, how do you effectively manage it? How do you do it? Um, and it's, it's kind of easy. It's, I mean, the, diff, the most difficult part is kind of, I think, finding your own voice that people like. <laughs> Right. Cause it's like, um, I think people, people are often scared and, and if that, you know, their voice is something that will turn people off, um, or that people that won't resonate with people. Um, and oftentimes that can feel like the case, right? I mean, if you're, if you never done it before and you, just, and, and you don't have any following, you just jump on and just start talking about whatever comes to mind. Um, you're probably not going to see much audience or growth. Um, and, and, and maybe, maybe that may never be the case. Um, but it's often, it's definitely something that, you know, it's, you have to work on and kind of nurture. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, you have to find that Venn diagram between, you know, what is, what, is, who am I authentically and what, what is something that people like, right? So it's like, it's, it's, it's a really, really interesting process. Um, whereas previously people were, you know, builders were doing this with, with, uh, with a product or a service or, or like a brand, but now they're doing it with themselves. So it's like it's really interesting to see kind of people kind of tweak themselves in a kind of real time. And so, and, and it's, it's also kind of to, to your point, like, you know, like what does someone stand for these days? Like if you see them, like kind of just iterate themselves um, and, you know, you kind of see, you almost see people kind of act like politicians in, on a small scale now. Like it's, um, it's, it's really interesting that in that regard, or like people will pull up receipts of like, um, influencers, I mean, or just like builders, even creators, you know, I see like, there's like creator drama or, or you would see like, you know, kind of drama that would typically like afflict like politicians now, like just, I think just like regular people dealing with, <laughs> which is really interesting. PR is now like everyone has, has power to do PR now and, and everyone's kind of learning in real time, like what that means. And there's no, there's not, there's kind of like, there's, there isn't too much kind of, um, guardrails for it right now. There, there's not too much like, um, yeah, we haven't really seen this before. So, um, on this scale, right. And so fast, it's like, you know, like all of a sudden, like, you know, you're building up a following and then someone points out something that you said before that doesn't jive with them or, or, that, or that offended them. And all of a sudden you're dealing with a, a PR problem. Um, and it's like, how, how does someone deal with that when they've, they've never dealt with that before and on their own? So that, okay, that's fascinating to me because I, right, we're going through this real time. Uh, as far as I know, never been done before, not in this universe anyway, this dimension. But like, we are supposed to change. And yet we're kind of also by, in some framing, it's like, you are still your worst mistake or you are still whatever. And it's like that kind of dichotomy um, is challenging to navigate. Um, because if we look at, 
uh, individuals now being companies and countries essentially being companies, everything's a company, everything's a product, everything's like this story, this image. Um, if a company 10 years ago um, put toxic chemicals in like a river um, and uh, kids downstream were playing it and got sick, uh, the company would be in hot water, like, you know, legal battles, probably pay out or whatever. But it's like, if, if the company also like 20 years later did like, you know, a lot of good, um, maybe because they realized they messed up and really wanted to put in like 200% on trying to do right more so than any other company that didn't feel bad about doing something bad or, you know, didn't have that. Um, that's kind of challenging to be like, well, um, net, the company's now done more good than bad, but the company's done bad. So do we wipe out the company and just like, we don't want that company anymore? Um, cause it's like, in a sense, that's what's what we're trying to deal with 8 billion people. And, uh, it's kind of challenging to, to figure out like, where, where's the, the judgment of that is it more nature, just like survival, just whichever kind of, again, going back to story, like whoever can kind of frame the story with receipts, like, you know, and then, uh, I'm just curious, what are your thoughts there? Do you think that this is um, like the challenge that, that everyone should kind of be aware of the importance of PR in um, identifying like who they are and uh, finding their tribe and um, finding their stake? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think um, it, it's, it's really interesting. It, it almost doesn't feel like anything isn't totally recoverable in terms of like a PR image. Um, I think we've seen it many, many times, kind of people just reform, like people with really bad bad PR or bad rep kind of reform themselves, um, online. And, you know, previously you would have, you'd see this with people with like huge PR teams, but now you can kind of see it with people kind of just with personal branding too. Um, and it's, I think it's like, like I said, scary, also inspiring, um, because it's like, you know, no matter what, at the end of the day, if you, I, I do think, you know, if you, I mean, there's, there's two, two kind of components to this, right? It's like, as long as you put out, you know, more good, as you mentioned, like 20 years ago, if I did something bad, but then now I'm doing like these great things that are helping society, um, that that kind of, you know, I think most people would believe that, that that can cancel out that thing. But the second component is that people have to know about it. And then like, and then, you know, maybe sometimes it's, it's more of the latter, maybe more of it's like, maybe you, you didn't even put out that much more good and you kind of just talk about it way more. Um, which kind of just makes people forget about that thing. Um, and traditionally we've kind of seen it with like, you know, athletes or politicians or yeah, or like countries who kind of just like, you know, kind of shovel down the bad, bad press, the, 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 the bad conversations with all these good things that they're doing. Um, and, or just like framing it in a different way that helps with their overall story. And so we, we know it's possible. Um, I mean, I don't know if I need to name names, but we've seen many, many prominent figures kind of just like somehow like remain just, you know, like standing tall, like even the myths, like really maybe terrible shit that they've done in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Or just telling, you know, telling the right story, framing it in the right way of telling it enough in enough places where people kind of just people, people forget, honestly, you know, especially with me, like so much info traveling so quickly. These days, you, you, you can kind of just get drowned in terms of like forgetting about like something specific that happened like two years ago or something. I'm going to take kind of a, a gamble here or risk. My, my, my intuition, once again, suggests that nature is fair, um, even though it doesn't quite seem like it. Like it, Maybe the cards aren't stacked in your favor and it feels unfair in the moment. But what are you not doing like in that moment? Like what are you, you know, there's, there's possibly a way. So what I mean by that in this context, let's say that... Uh, you know, you, you're trying to like uh, rehabilitate your image or something. Are you just giving it lip service? Are you just saying it? Or are you like actually doing something like Kobe Bryant was like pretty much beloved by the majority of, of people, but there was a time when he was in hot water and uh, he just played his little heart out and uh, became like one of the best players like living. And that was basically it. And then, and then he had um, room to then show his better side, which we all have bad sides. We all have good sides. Like, let's not pretend we don't. So that's data coming back to you. Like when you said, like, find your voice, whatever, and no one likes what I have to say. Well, think about that. Am I trying to get them to like me and they can see through that on like an instinctual level? Um, am I being fake because I'm trying to be something I think I should be and not being me? Um, there's lots of like data that you could kind of process and, and kind of 
run. So I'm just saying like, maybe um, rather than just do, like just say, um, try to reframe something or, or just try to highlight like the good that I did. Like, look, I'm giving a check to charity, take a picture, I'm a good person. Maybe actually do something amazing. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think eventually people will be like, I don't care what, like you see this all the time, like people that you'd be questioned, like you wonder like what, like how, and, um, but it's like, they did something substantial enough that uh, eclipses like the rest. So I, I think more often than not anyway, maybe there's exceptions, but more often than not, um, if you just look at, like honestly look at uh, what happened, um, that allows you to improve, like properly, truly improve, not just improve the narrative, but improve the, um, like what you're talking about. So I agree. I, I think transparency is probably the best policy. It can be uncomfortable. Like it, it'd be nice to have like an airbrushed uh, social media profile and all that. But if you're going back to countries too, like if we censor history or like kind of close stuff off to the secrets of the past, I'd say there's a high probability that we're just going to repeat the same mistakes. Like, oh, I didn't know that that could happen. Like, it's like, yeah, it happened like hundred years ago, like the exact same thing. Um, and so I think uh, same with like, a personal life too. Like um, we just, cause then I think you realize it's humbling and you realize like we kind of all need each other for a variety of reasons. And you have a little bit more empathy for each other. Like I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. And I mean, there's limits <laughs> like, I'm not perfect. Like drive my car to the wrong uh, side of the road or whatever. If you're deliberate about it, I think there does need to be some sort of intervention, but I think you can have a little bit more grace, a little bit more like cushion on like trying to get the, the human project uh, into the next phase. Um, and then I think also competition is good um, and conflict is good. Again, there's limits, um, but I think that it can really drive you. Um, and I, I don't think there's anything that's going to get you off the couch than a little bit of fear, a little bit of passion. Um, and sometimes that comes out in competition, hopefully healthy competition where everyone's still like, you know, walking and ideally even shaking hands at the end of the day. But um, I, I think that in some sense, like the reputation, the PR side, is a little bit of like competition with, because it it's many things can force you to research. It doesn't have to be like hot war, but um, if if there's a a passion or a reason to try to figure something out, um, that can sometimes lead to many discoveries. And so, in this case, people trying to look at like what happened, how do I improve this, or how do I frame my product or my launch in this way, um, and someone else is doing the same thing and maybe playing like. Uh, like some competition, like don't buy their product. They did this like 10 years ago or whatever. And so you're, I mean, it's, it can be kind of crazy, but I think it ultimately it drives us forward in kind of who we are and how we operate. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I think it, certainly, I, I think competition is good. Um, and I think, as I mentioned before, where people can kind of bounce back from, from bad PR, I think, I think I was just thinking about it when I mentioned what we we're talking about, like bad PR, it's like, um, so much of it isn't necessarily even just bad. It's just that they've been airbrushed so much that when, when something gets let loose, that isn't kind of um, makes sense with what you believe to be who they are based off of the stories they've been telling you, then, then it becomes bad PR. It's like, wow, I can't believe this person did that. But that's really kind of just like, that's just them when they're not like being this perfect image that they're putting out. It's really interesting where it's like, um, there's a competition to be, almost in like as, as like airbrush in a way as possible and airbrush to be authentic where like everyone at the top is talking about authenticity and like being real, but then they have like a huge team behind them that are like, you know, writing their, like writing their content or like telling them what to say. Um, and it's like how much of it is really, I think truly authentic. You know, you say, you say, you know, you, you talk about like a challenge when it's, when it's advantageous to be talking about that, or you talk about a flaw um, when it's advantageous to talk about that. Um, so it's like, it's a question about how much of it's real. And then if we're, if we're talking about like nature kind of always uh, like balances it out, then, then we can presume that eventually the public will know, um, or like, you know, the person will, will eventually, I think, realize, I think, I guess how difficult it is to, to, to live a life where it's, um, where you're kind of just faking it. There's only so much you can fake. Right. Well, people um, are smarter than you wish they were. Um, if you're yeah. trying to pull wool over their eyes, I mean, people can, you can just, our, our like instincts are like surprisingly advanced. Like oftentimes we kind of 
like brainwash ourselves. Like we, we get like data that we should have listened to and we ignore it and do anything, but typically we, we kind of know. And yeah. um, within like a nanosecond, it's like, oh, she's lying or like, um, or he's lying. Um, and, but it's like, but they're on the right side or, you know, they're on, they're on like the winning team or, or whatever. And so, or like, you know, if, if I align myself with them, um, I have a greater chance of success in this uh, realm um, at this time. And so there's a variety of reasons why you might just go along with it. Uh, but yeah, if you see someone with a massive like team behind them, I, I think uh, at some point, like they don't even realize how much they might be contradicting themselves or how much that might not land. And you see this on, on a smaller scale, maybe in job interviews where the mm -hmm. applicant is trying to sell themselves and the, um, the interviewers are, are trying to see like, you know, look for clues on how this person might work for the next few years. Uh -huh. um, and it's like, well, what, what is your weakness? And it's like, oh, my weakness is that I just care too much about people. <laughs> and it's like, uh, okay, that, that's, that's BS. Like, you yeah. know, um, so yeah. And I think many times, I guess you could call them like politicians or uh, people at um, like representing large companies, uh, high stakes, I guess, like uh -huh. the teams that you mentioned. I don't blame them for using the word authenticity, um, but I think it's almost like a, a new language where there's a, like this film or this like kind of layer, the separation between um, their actions. And I mean, just the nature, I'm not necessarily trying to blame them. I, I don't know how I would be in their shoes. Um, but then like the it's, it's like saying, oh, I'm, I'm one of the little people. It's like, you know, you came here in a helicopter, you, <laughs> you've got like 30 people behind you. Like, you know, we're totally different. Like you don't even chew your own food. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it, but it, it's like, they, they kind of know that's what they're supposed to say, or they're told like that's what they're supposed to say. That's almost like the the, the trade-off that I mentioned earlier, where you get so successful that you're now exposed, uh, and you don't even realize it. It's like you're you're so successful, you've got this blind spot now, and yeah. it's almost like an hourglass where it's just like, can you like get to the next level where we're not going to judge you? Because if you don't, if you don't, and it's just like what's wild about nature. It's like, yeah, it, it's giving you a chance. Like, you, you know, the clock is ticking, but you've got to get to like the next thing. You have to accomplish yeah. something. You have to change your strategy or something. Otherwise, I think the masses catch up and then they're like, oh, he's fake or, um, you know, whatever. And then, and then you, the slings and arrows come. Um, and that's like the game that, that, that you're in. And I, I think on some level, it kind of keeps it fair um, because it's like no one... I don't think reaches the safe state where you no longer have to try. Yeah. 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 And I think that that brings it back to the point of um, like, what is uh, uh, like if being authentic is easy and being transparent is the best way to go. I think at the end of the day, it is, it just might not get you to that level, which, you know, maybe business wise you want to get to like, maybe like who you are, like exactly who you are may not actually be what people want to hear or care about but that's the easiest thing to kind of put out there. Right. And, and it's the, it's, it's, it may not be something people care about. It may not even be, people, be things that people like, maybe they hate it. So it's like, it's an interesting kind of choice that you have to make each time you kind of go online of like, do I, do I want to be myself or do I want to be myself a part of a kind of a version of myself that actually that people like that people want to listen to. And so if you're, if, if you're trying to always be that version of people will listen to, then yeah, it's always like, it's always this constant battle, like trying to like figure that out. Sometimes there's a greater reward for not being liked initially. So like if you're contradictory or people are like, I hate that guy. And then it kind of flips at some point. And then they like, they love you or something. And I think, um, again, not trying to be like, a, like manipulate your way into like um, being adored, but I think if I look at like why that could be, it might be a test of authenticity. Like if someone's willing to stand in the middle of the room and piss everyone off, they must be real because uh, no one would choose to do that. It's uncomfortable to do that. So therefore, um, I don't know what the time frame would be, but eventually like when the, uh, the tides turn or whatever, um, then it's like they like that unique thing about them that used to drive people crazy. But now, um, have you seen that in your kind of, PR uh, studies, I guess. 
Um, yeah, well, you know, to, I mean, to be fully honest, I mean, we, we're always only telling the best stories for, for our clients, right? We kind of have to. Um, yeah, so this is going to hurt for a year. No one's going to like you, but trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, for, we always have to ask the questions of like, you know, what, what challenges have you faced or, or you know, what's something that's kind of unsavory that you'd be willing yeah. to share, but it's like, you know, it's always up to, to them, what do they want to share? And um, I, mm. I know that, you know, a lot of them are, are not sharing certain things because, um, sure. why would you, um, and we, we wouldn't tell it that way. And we were probably, we would always probably like spin it in a certain way, which, which puts them in the best light. Cause yeah. you know, that's, that's what we're getting paid to do at the end of the day. Right. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. Cause like on one hand we can kind of look at it as like, you know, like creating BS. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, it's just, we're kind of just trying to frame the story in a way where it's like, you know, this, this is, this is how this person wants to be known as. And that's, that's, I think we can all kind of, kind of, um, resonate with that. I think we, we're, yeah. we never want it. We never want, we're not, we're never presenting ourselves in a bad light, right? We're always trying to present ourselves in the best light. Right. Um, so, so, you know, in a sense, we're kind of just doing that as a business. Mm. Um, and it's, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we try to, we try to, and it, it's also oftentimes, I think someone would tell that story to themselves as well. I think, yeah, I think this, this is the get, this is a little bit further away from like, um, the business side of things, but I think no one would kind of view themselves as a bad person. Like even like, I think the worst person you can think of probably thinks of themselves as a great person. Right. So, um, you know, in you a sense, have like, to. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can't, you can't All imagine that person would get by. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's basically the story they're telling us and we're not here to kind of like push them into thinking like, Hey, like you're a bad person. It's like, Hey, like, okay, we, we know like you've gone through some challenges and uh, you know, this is how you dealt with it. And, um, and you're telling us, um, you know, that's, that's the way that um, you've grown from it. And that's great. But obviously there, there are, there are obvious like um, kind of gotchas where we just can't work with that person. Right. It's like, we're, we're, we're probably talking about something that would like, you know, that, that would probably maybe like cause like debates on Twitter, but you know, definitely no legal lines can be drawn where it's like someone clearly like, like ha either has like an active case against them or, um, has like, um, you know, ha has been accused of something. Um, those are cases where, you know, we can't take on, um, because the publication will allow for that. Um, it's just, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's not worth the risk. Um, for either side. Um, and, you know, we've had, we've had plenty of cases where, like that, where it's like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be working with a client. They've, they've paid us the money and then they're like, Hey, like, you know, like, can, can we like, um, can we put out some, some, some content that would kind of like, um, push down this bad content that there's about, about me. And then we're like, well, like, what is it? You know, like, like, don't worry. Like, we're not going to like, like, you know, if you show it to us, like, we're not going to like put it out there and like, uh, you know, and then tell people about it. And then, and then they show us and they're like, yeah, like can't work with this. This is like, um, like, I'm sorry. Like, we're not here to kind of like, you know, make the judgment call on you, whether you like did this thing or not, or like, whether you're a good person or not, but it's just, it's, it's just not something that, you know, we can kind of take on. Uh, we're not willing to kind of take that risk. Cause it's like, you know, at the end of the day, obviously there's, 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 there's certain situations where, you know, it, it, it something, you know, a story, a bad story about them could be wrong or like, um, it could be like, you know, we, we don't know. There are, there are a lot of companies that would do that. Like, um, sorry, um, reputation management companies, but yeah, that's, that's something we definitely don't do. We avoid, um, like the plague. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. What's something that you see people get wrong a lot? when they, when they look at that, we talked about authenticity and maybe our blind spots and, um, understanding why others aren't seeing us the way that we wish we would be seen, but, uh, you have a lot more experience in this. Um, are you seeing any kind of quick fixes or kind of, um, uh, adjustments people can make with their public image? I think it's like, it's like, if you were to just be really raw, um, and like, I think those are like, really interesting, like where you don't hear from anyone, from someone, or like you, like, like from what you hear from them, it's always like kind of corporate speak. And all of a sudden they, they, they talk about something that's really personal to them, um, where you just know, like this person wrote it, right? It's like that, that's like a quick, like, okay, well now, I'm, now I'm like, you got me, like, I'm interested. I, I think I kind of understand you as a person. 
Whereas before, like, let's say someone just, someone's on LinkedIn, they're always just talking about their company. Like, oh, like, you know, we, we hired two people here. Like, you know, our company just, just got this client. And then all of a sudden they're like talking about, like, I don't know, like, like I don't know, really personal story with, with their grandma. You know, you can kind of just feel the emotional resonance of it. Then you're like, okay, wow. Like, you know, this, this person was, was really real. And then, you know, we kind of all, kind of all crave that. You know, just because everyone, everyone knows everything is so manufactured, right? Um, whether it's your friends on Instagram or it's Dave from Salesforce or um, just any of the politicians that you, you listen to and hear of, like, you know, that, that kind of like whenever you kind of get like that little like kind of just that hit of authentic, like you really feel the authenticity, then it's like, then you're like, wow, okay, I'm in. And then how to do that, like, it's like we said, just, just really try to be transparent, like, um, like write what, like, don't write with the intention of, of, of getting someone to like what you're saying, just write something you really want to put out, you know? And that's, I think that's, that's what would really like kind of boost you. And it, it, it sucks because at the same time, like you're doing this to kind of build up those points, those brownie points, <laughs> but well, there's, I, I, again, I think there's genuine rewards. Yeah. Um, and I think that like dopamine, for example, like you can cheat dopamine or you can earn it the, the, the honest way. And if you earn it the honest way, it tends to last a little longer, um, like working out or whatever. Um, but it, similarly, I, what I, I thought about if like being authentic, like what, what is that? That is authentically being on the journey, the human journey. And when you're authentically on the human journey, then you're actually contributing real data to the uh, genome, to the, the group organism. Um, and there'll be mistakes, but if it's like, you know, in good faith or like coming by honestly, like here's, you know, here's my receipts, here's my trail, my discovery, you can kind of, it's like uh, open source code. Um, and it's like, oh, I can see that, how we could improve this or that's useful, I could take this piece and apply it here. So I think that's maybe why you get rewarded um, because that was actually helpful for the species. Um, whereas if it's just, trying to gain that, trying to be like, look, I'm magically perfect and I'm just magically getting better because I'm magically the saying the right things or whatever. Um, that's kind of fragile, I think. Not to say it hasn't worked or can work, but I just think it's, um, it, it's, it's less, uh, I just say concentrated value. Whereas like authenticity, it's like espresso or something. It's like, just that's like, that's real. That's, and, and that's what I think. What's cool about that is it's accessible to just about anyone. Um, yeah. I guess uh, some of us might come about it easier initially than others, but essentially we all could, I guess, learn to say what we think. And um, hopefully there's uh, space to, to think differently because I think we do think differently and, and that's kind of the, the point. Um, yeah. But uh, that's also where like the discovery is, you know, uh, in understanding like what's the distance between how I think and you think, because uh, mm -hmm. there's a whole different way to interpret the world. It's almost like going on a trip um, and then if you think like going back to languages again, if you speak a couple languages or you think of different perspectives or something, it gives you more flexibility of thought, more ways that you can innovate and more things you can do. Yeah. I like what you said about contributing to the genome. Um, and also I think that that ties into like the comp competitive aspect as well. You know, there, there's so many kind of like, if, if you're kind of just putting out your voice out there, which is just, um, and you're, you're not. And you're in your and you're trying to manufacture in a way that kind of just sounds like um, where it won't cause any controversy or any like or any kind of form of like potential for embarrassment um, or fear of looking like uh, or look, fear of looking like an idiot or, or being silly. Um, then, then you're not really doing much for for the market or kind of just the human condition because it's like um, you know what we really need is kind of like kind of to see kind of the, the, the kind of the distribution or, or the diversity of opinions, right. And, and, and thought processes that that's kind of what really people are interested in. And, and, and also kind of what just like contributes. Cause it's like, um, we have thousands of prominent voices kind of saying the same thing. Um, it's not really going to move us further. It's going to move us in one direction in one singular direction, but it's really not going to help kind of just diversify and, and give our kind of, I guess the, our, our human like, um, momentum kind of more, um, 
a fuller, more richer experience and in, in, in just, yeah, direction. Um, so I, I definitely believe in that. And, and then unfortunately, like oftentimes the thing is like, if you really believe in that, you're going to, you're, you're going to have to invite like voices that you disagree with or are ugly. Um, so it's kind of like, and I think that's the kind of the whole battle of, um, I think with X over like the last two years, right. Since Elon bought it where it's like, like, it's like an extreme, um, I don't even want to maybe necessarily say extreme version of free speech. Um, where it's like, there's just like no censorship where like, even like the regular person thinks like, no, like maybe there should be a little censorship because like all of a sudden you're just seeing these really, really unsavory or kind of just awful things, but it's just kind of like these things exist or like these people exist and it's like, and these thoughts exist. So it's like, like, are, are we doing, are doing the world a good or, or a bad by, by kind of like pushing these to the side and not letting them allowed to kind of see the light of day. Um, but it's like, it's like you're saying, like, if we don't allow that to come to light, then we kind of are, are prone to kind of re repeat it. Right. Kind of just grows in, in the dark in a sense. Well, that is a complicated, yeah, that, that's yeah. above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> but if I were to take a stab at that, I don't think um, any one of us like naturally has animosity for another. Um, yeah. I think our natural state is to uh, seek connection, like be seen and be accepted. Um, belong and then stacking on that, it'd be great to have some status, to have some nice food, to have this and that. I mean, but like as far as like our requirements, uh, what, what we ultimately seek. Mm -hmm. So, I think if if it is a person, um, I think something there's like some problem, some rupture that hasn't been addressed, and that's mm -hmm. kind of uh, spiraled out of control. And in, in a sense, it's a cry for help. Um, and uh, again, there could be exceptions, but I think generally in, in my experience, that's kind of how I see it. But I don't know that it's always a human when it comes to the internet. So like there could be bots and then you wonder like what kind of chess game is being played here. Um, Cause you have like event A and then you have like speaking of framing, framing B and then you have like program bot C and then it can kind of stack this new reality where like I didn't have hatred for uh, this particular company, person, country, whatever. Um, but now I'm like, I'm getting a little bit closer to it. Um, and so it's like, it's almost like a stress test, I guess, for people's uh, character. Um, and, and then it gets in this whole philosophical question. Like, if you're truly settled, like nothing should really phase you. Um, and I think I do. I believe anyway, that most people are like that. I, I don't, I don't see, you know, the water's still running, the electricity is still going on. Like when I walk down the street, people are still like reasonably pleasant, but I, I think things just get kind of, or they can reach a fever pitch uh, online. And it's unclear how much of that is authentic human sentiment and how much of that is bot sentiment or program bots. And then how much of that is kind of the synthesis of um, people's, um, you know, shadows or, or, um, you know, the, the, the less perfect bits kind of being played upon. Um, and I mean, I, so you, you brought up, uh, us and, and China before. Um, so I would, I, I lived in Asia for over a decade. Uh, I went to Japan, uh, first and, um, I'm from Los Angeles originally. So there's a large Korean population there. So the plan is to go to Korea, but uh, Japan just had better marketing. Speaking of PR, um, uh, at the time, I think now, uh, Korea's made good, good strides. But um, so anyway, I checked out both countries, but I didn't go to China for a long time because of the PR and um, the uh, media that I grew up in. Um, it was like this curtain and there's like good and bad and China bad. And um, I was after living for years in, in Asia, uh, like China's like Rome. Um, and it's like, you can't be in Asia and not like go to China. And um, I realized like, you know, that's kind of weird that I've been here this long and I haven't gone. So I finally went. And uh, I've been a few times now and I was just amazed. Like, um, it, first of all, like, I think people are largely good everywhere. Um, and you're like eating uh, dinner out on this, like, you know, outdoor uh, seating at a restaurant in Shanghai and um, looking around, people are just like your grandma and grandpa back home or whatever. Um, and I, I realized 
at the time, and maybe we all realize this at different times in different ways, but that I, I didn't understand reality. Like I was, I was basically being programmed by media for whatever reason or a variety of reasons, perhaps. Um, and I didn't know uh, about this massive like country. And if that's true, what else don't I know about everything? And then, um, and then there are, you know, it goes both ways. And so it's, it's unclear if, if any individual is really meant to understand like everything all at once. And yet we're kind of, I don't want to say we're expected to, but it's almost like because we have like a supercomputer in our pocket and um, access to any information we want, first of all, we're not really holding on to many opinions or information for very long, just because we only have so much capacity. Um, and also we have this weird thing where we want to be consistent and that's obviously impossible. So we just kind of play, I don't know. I don't know what we play actually. You might know this better than I, but how do you, uh, I'll send this down to you before I, uh, you know, just ramble on. How, how do you see like our desire to be consistent with like just the changes, the rapid changes we're going through and how, how can you navigate that? I guess, you know, without just saying authentic, uh, being authentic, but do you have any kind of um, input on like, is it okay to contradict yourself? Is it okay to change your mind? Um, if I thought something in 2023, but I think something now different in 2024, how do I um, communicate that and still be like part of my authentic brand, if you will? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think it's, you know, it all comes back down to the story you tell, right? It's like, you can, you can change your, you can, I think people are totally accepted to that. Um, but it's like, they want to know why. And the story you have to tell kind of has to make sense to them and they have to understand it. You know, we're purely talking about from a PR perspective, obviously kind of just, you know, from an individual level, people are, people are more than welcome to kind of change their mind, whatever they want. Right. Um, especially as you know, you get, you gain new information, you grow, like things change, like you have different experiences, different things that impact you. Um, and yeah, but in terms of like a PR perspective, um, I think it's all about kind of just the story you tell. Um, and we've seen plenty of, I think, prominent people kind of just switch switch sides or like change like their view on certain things. Um, but as long as as long as the, the story they tell for why that happens, and it's not just kind of like a jerk, um, you know, because because yeah, people always want to know the why, um, and that why needs to kind of you know be congruent with with their beliefs of how the world works. Yeah, that why is actually like the antidote or like a chemical compound that's going to make it worse. Like so yeah. you, uh, if you get that why wrong, uh, like again, if you try to like game the system or whatever with that why, that could uh, wind up hurting you more than uh, just coming clean. So I checked out your website. Uh, it looks really great, presscart.com. Um, and people can go there and uh, sign up and and see like uh, what what options are available to them um what would you like to tell us about Prescart? yeah so you know we want to we want to make it the best place to, to tell your story um and so what i kind of described in the beginning of this was was version one we have a version two that we've been working on that's coming out um end of this month um and what it's going to allow you to do is you know it's you know if you want to tell kind of a story about yourself and you want to put it on your on your linkedin or your blog um, we're going to make it super easy to do so it's, um, I would kind of think of it in terms of like, we're trying to, um, and I hate this phrase, but I'm going to use it, um, but bridge the gap between something like chat GPT and then, um, like a story, like a published ready story. Um, because you can't just take chat GPT content and then post it online. Um, so it's like, you know, we, we answer, we ask questions. It's, it, we have like a very, I think, opinionated way of how we want to tell stories. Um, and what we need for a story. Um, so we asked a lot more questions, obviously, than the chat GPT would. Um, and then to kind of just understand kind of all the kind of components about you, what you believe in and, you know, what your history is. Um, and then we use that to then create stories that I, I, we kind of just spent the last couple of years thinking like these are, these are the templates or layouts for stories that we think really resonate. Um, yeah, whether it's like, um, like this is, this is what I value. This is what I believe in. Or like, this is, th these are things I struggle with, like these type of templates of stories that we think. Um, so we kind of just like put everything through those lens with a couple clicks of a button, answer a couple questions. Um, and then you can get stories like that. Um, or, and then you can, you know, put on your blog or put on LinkedIn, or you can get, you know, put it on a, one of these publications that we have a relationship with. 
Um, and so, yeah, we, we just want to make it the everything place to kind of just get your story out there. Is it, um, I haven't used it yet. Is it similar um, to like Hootsuite or, or who would maybe some of your uh, contemporaries or, or competitors be? We, we obviously have like, I think a lot of like, no, like lesser known competitors uh, who are kind of just in like the publishing space. But we don't have anything that anyone would know about um, because, like you know, we we have the ability we can give you the ability to get published um, on like Inverse.com or Nylon.com, um, and we make it very streamlined to do so. Um, I don't really know any other place that does that. I mean, typically, like I, I think our product has 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 typically been more geared towards PR firms or, or marketing firms. Um, Kind of like um, because you have to have the ability to kind of understand like what is the what is the what is the value of getting published in a place like this and like um, what is the story I want to tell it's kind of like a almost like a do it yourself kind of like PR marketplace um, so it wasn't really like kind of like geared towards consumers um, or like people who weren't very familiar with the PR process uh, but as we said as we said like people are kind of learning this on, in real time. And they're kind of understanding like kind of the value of it. And we really want to cater to that market now, that growing market of like, okay, like, like I'm, I understand the value of PR. I understand like I'm building a personal brand here. Like I, I need something to help me. Like in terms of like, if I, if I want to have like ability to tell certain types of stories or just ideas or templates uh, for doing so, this is the best place to do it. If I need like, you know, a ghost writer or, or someone to write it for me, this is also the place. Cause it's like, you know, we, we, we have to cater to this huge content machine that's just always running now, right? And, and then putting out that type of content is, is very difficult to kind of do on your own, especially if you're running your own business. Um, and so, I mean, that's something I struggle with. And, you know, full transparency, you know, I have people write stuff for me. Um, so, like, this is kind of the service where you can write, where you can write stuff yourself. Um, you can get help if you need. Um, and then you can also get that story published in other places. So, um kind of just yeah like we want to hit like all these different areas where i think a a, a full uh, all around kind of just pr campaign would do anyways so just putting it where are you place. headed yeah it's it's it, it, it's it's really that i'd say um cuz like i said i think uh, well this i think this comes back to the belief especially with ai that um ai is never going to be a better writer than a human writer um and at different. the end of the day yeah, like we, for us, you know, everything that we do, it's like AI is used to help you plan, to help you kind of get to the point where you can just focus on like the, the story you're telling. Um, you know, whether it's like we help you create the content briefs with, you know, AI, like, you know, our very, like, I think, opinionated way of doing so. Um, the briefs, doing the research. Um, so it's like, hey, like, you know, you can back up this, this, work, this thing that you're mentioning with, with this link, this published link. Um, so we, we want to get to that point where it's like we take away all the work, all the kind of like the, the grunt work that has to do with writing and just mm. you can just focus on just, you know, your voice and, and, and what's authentic to you um, and personal story and personal experience. Because, you know, at the end of the day, AI is never going to replace that. And we don't think people 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 want to hear stuff from AI or robots. Um, it's like it's really it's really cool and it's, and it's interesting right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but over time, especially as it becomes normalized, we're going to want to hear from, from real people as they do now. Yeah, I agree. And speaking of voice, uh, you mentioned that you can never talk to your customers enough or, um, find out kind of what the customer wants. Uh, in, you know, some people send out surveys. Um, some people do focus interviews. Um, do you have any kind of input or ideas for, um, how, uh, entrepreneurs or companies should go about kind of finding their customers' pain points, finding their customers' voice? Yeah, I would say it's just, it's pretty like, uh, we can overcomplicate it. I've overcomplicated it. It's as simple as just, I think, just sending an email saying, hey, like, like, thanks for using our platform. Would you, like, I'd love to talk to you. I'm um, trying to improve, you know, the experience for you. And then people are, people are very receptive to that. Um, I think it's also, like we said, like people typically don't hear from the person that runs the, the, the company, right? Um, so when you do that, they're like, oh, wow, like, you know, like that's, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, I, this is an opportunity for me to kind of just, you know, see what this company's about, you know, who this person is, like if I should keep working with them. Um, and, you know, that's a great opportunity for you to learn. Right. And it's like, I think, um, I think people should stop kind of avoiding that 
or like figuring out ways to kind of separate themselves from, from their customers. Cause I think oftentimes you're worried that like someone's going to tell you, Hey, like your shit sucks, but excuse my language, but, um, yeah. And, um, and that's, that's, especially those type of conversations are probably the most beneficial, right? I think it's helpful to have like a table or something in between um, the people you're speaking to so that it can, like their words can kind of sit there for a minute and you can look at how they were meant and done, like kind of decide whether or not you want to take that on. So sometimes it might be necessary to hear that. Uh, maybe it's true, um, but sometimes maybe they're just trying to hurt your feelings. And sometimes both can be true at the same time. Um, and so it's good if you want to get better, it's good to be able to not like absorb all of it right away but have like this uh, like escrow for the person's word for a little bit and just like look at it. Maybe that escrow is only lasts a, a half second, but still like um, I, I think it, it's probably like if you look at like two extremes, it's probably better to have like all the data and then try to like suss out um, how much of that is useful to you. What do you think? Yeah. In terms of like you're saying, like having a mix between like the one on one conversations and surveys and like. Or well, just... not being, um, you, you said some people are, um, I don't know if you use the word afraid, but like uh, I'll use the word afraid of, of kind of finding out that people don't like what you are offering. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. but it isn't, I, I think that's probably important to figure that well, out yeah. sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like I said, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to remember to just have that just conversation. Um, especially like when there's, there's so many other aspects of the business, like where it's like, I could be like, you know, instead of talking to one person, I could be selling to like 20, but, mm, right. um, and it's like, well, you know, you really, sometimes you don't, you, you really can't tell, um, the story behind just like, just data points, mm -hmm. um, or just like, you know, like you send out a survey and then you get a thousand responses and then, you know, you get the average kind of rating that you hear and then you're like, Oh, I, I got a four. Like, that's great. Like, you know, yeah. there's nothing here. Right. Uh -huh. Um, then you talk to someone you kind of just go deep into their experience and then you build that connection and that, mm. that's, and then that connection then allows them to be vulnerable and, and really kind of tell you how they really feel. Right. Um, and then you can kind of really unearth kind of really, really interesting, important points that you would never know otherwise. So, yeah. And like I said, I don't do enough. I got to remind myself to do it. Um, and ideally I'd be doing it every day. Uh, and I'm trying to get to that point. You've done a couple of ventures now. Um, you mentioned the nightclub business and I'm sure you're talking to a lot of entrepreneurs doing what you're doing now in PR. Uh, what is like, do you have any kind of advice or any, um, like, are you seeing kind of patterns, uh, that people could kind of follow to have a higher probability of success as an entrepreneur? Yeah, well, for me, um, and I think just to, I think this gives context to what I'm saying. It's like, um, I think for, 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 for most of my life, and we can talk about it if it was a good goal or not. I think for me, it wasn't, um, but for most of my life, I want, like, I, I was like, I want to build a business that, um, the first step is to crack, you know, seven figures. Um, and for most of my life, I couldn't get there. Um, I was just kind of, you know, beating my head against the wall, like, why not? And then, uh, you know, I was finally able to do it here with press cart um like a year ago um and then same thing with a uh, same thing with another business i'm involved in um called source forward um but it's um the the it really kind of just turned around very quickly once i started realizing like i can't do everything myself and think um that was something that i think uh i was somehow for a variety of different reasons was mis misled to believe and obviously i think this is different for everyone. There's obviously people who are, are who are really, really capable of, of, of doing themselves. And there's a huge movement behind like the indie hacker, like community of, of people kind of just running kind of just these mini companies on their own and they're doing great. Um, but for me, the biggest, the biggest hack was kind of just working with other people, um, and trusting other people to kind of take on like areas of major areas of the business that, um, that I can kind of just set aside. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was when it finally really kind of finally like clicked for me, um, where I can kind of like focus on the things that I'm good at. People focus on the other things. Um, and then, you know, then the wheels started turning and then, you know, things were starting to grow. Um, so that's, that, that would be my advice for anyone kind of just been in my position where it's like, they keep trying things on their own. Um, they keep kind of just, just seeing things not working out. Um, but they're kind of afraid to like maybe like give half their company away or like give like, or like, you know, work with someone because like, you know, and I've heard it before as well from other people where like, I would never have a co-founder. I would never, 
you know, I would, I would never like, um, give someone like, you know, this much responsibility or, or over the business. I don't trust them. Um, I can't trust them. It's like, um, yeah, but it's, um, at least for me and I'm sure for, I mean, obviously for a lot of people, you know, that, that's hugely important. And, and it's like, um, you can't, you're not, you're not, you can't be good at everything. Um, right. Especially well, you're not. This, yeah, exactly. Um, and especially in this day and age where, you know, there's, there's so many more responsibilities we covered in this, this, this discussion about mm. running a business, mm -hmm. you need people to help you. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes, yeah, that, that's a co-founder or that's a key player, like a, like, you know, a C-suite player. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to incentivize them. You're going to have to give them a lot, um, to, to get them to, to care and, and to be invested. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, and that's just something you got to do. Some people are, aren't willing to kind of share in that regard, or they feel mm. like they're, they're, they're like, they're worried about if they're going to give too much or more than someone else. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think the whole thing with the 50, 50 thing, I think people are worried about like, am I doing more than the other person? Mm -hmm. They're constantly worried about that. And sometimes you probably will be, oftentimes mm -hmm. you might be, um, but that's, that's still better than you doing it all alone. That's a great answer. And I, I think it's all about people at the end of the day. And uh, you, you've probably heard that expression. I don't know if I'll butcher it here, but like, would you rather have half of a watermelon or a whole grape kind of thing? Um, and I've actually never heard that before. Okay. But, but I'm it, glad it, to hear it. It's because, it's yeah, it's in order to scale, sometimes you have to let something go, um, mm -hmm. open up a little bit, trust a little bit. Maybe you'll get hurt a little bit, but you'll also win, hopefully, a lot of it. And um, you just kind of like what I pivoted from being a solopreneur to like running a company that that was rough for like a year i had because i didn't know how much growth i had to do personally in order to learn how to manage people mm -hmm. uh, in order to like learn how much to let go um mm -hmm. and how to absorb certain uh, mistakes like how much mistakes are part of the learning process how much takes my intervention how much is it just a different style um and i just have to kind of let go and let things be different than like mm -hmm. i would do it if i was doing it all myself exactly. and i mean it, it, there's so much learning there Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think you have to go through it. Um, and I'm glad that I did. I, I would recommend everyone do that. But of course, you know, if, if we're all on our kind of own timeline. But um, yeah, I think that's that's a great uh, perspective you have there. And um, congratulations on, on breaking the seven figure mark. Hopefully um, eight is coming up soon. That's and, the goal. Uh, you know, from one entrepreneur to another, uh, respect. Uh, keep it up. Thank you, thank you. Be best of luck. Um, I mentioned the website. Yeah, uh, is there anywhere else that you wanted to point people? Um, probably just my LinkedIn. You know, okay. like I said, I'll be I'll be working on you know my own authenticity and, and putting out you know content that resonates with me out there on there. So um, great, that'll be a good place to follow me. Well, thanks, Edgar. It's a pleasure. Awesome. Really appreciate it, David.